What was the most heroic act you've ever witnessed? I'll start. A few years ago my family and some friends and I were heading home on our boat after having spent the day anchored in a popular swimming cove. It was an hour or so before sunset so the waters were pretty busy with people heading back to their slips. Most notably there were two jet skiers who were rocketing around in our wake, trying to get air. They must have gotten bored of this and decided to pass us. They speed up, and there is one on either side of our boat. They were starting to get dangerously close, so my father's friend, an ex-Navy pilot, who was driving, honks the horn a few times and tries to wave them off. No response. Either they don't hear, or they don't care. Just as my father's friend says he is going to slow down to let these idiots get ahead of us, one of the jet skiers, who is apparently unaware of the boat's presence, cuts hard to his right, directly into the path of our boat. My father's friend can't swerve to avoid him without running the other jet skier over, and there is no way he can stop in time to let the jet skier go in front. So he cuts the engine and goes hard to the left knowing it's better if the idiot hits to the hull instead of the bow. The sound of the engine being cut finally catches the attention of the dude we are about to run over milliseconds before the impact. He has just about enough time to see the boat and then wham. There is an awful shuddering sound and then thudding all along the bottom of the boat. At this point we had glided to a stop and my mother had ushered all the smaller children into the cabin because we had no idea what this was going to look like. We are all scanning the water when we see the mangled jet ski jump out of the water about 30 feet behind us. A moment later, the jet skier's body does the same. The guy was floating face down, not moving. My mother started screaming. I nearly passed out and my father's friend was already on the radio for help. But my father? Without hesitation the man dove into the water fully clothed, shoes, wallet, sunglasses, everything, and started swimming toward what appeared to be a dead body and a jet ski now leaking fuel into the water. I start screaming for him to come back. The water we were in was 30 feet deep and there was gas everywhere. I was terrified. My father made it to the body, shook the guy and turned him over. The jet skier's head lolled. My father then pinched the guy's nose and gave him mouth to mouth until he sputtered back in consciousness. Almost immediately, the jet skier started flailing in panic, probably having a delayed reaction to having seen a boat about to run him over. That's when he pushed my father underwater. My father got away and swam back up. They were pretty far away, but I heard him yell something along the lines of, I will hit you, or don't make me hit you, and the jet skier calmed down a little until he saw the tangle of metal that was once his jet ski, that is. The jet skier, who we found out later had shattered his collarbone and most of the bones in right arm and leg, started trying to swim toward the jet ski. My father tried to hold him back but didn't want to hurt him. The jet skier managed to get back to the jet ski and started to try to turn it back on. My father started screaming because he knew that if anything in that engine moved that the explosion would likely kill them both and his family and friends floating nearby. That's when my father grabbed the guy by the life jacket and dragged him away from the wreckage. Once they got a few feet out he held onto the guy with one hand and took off the shirt he was wearing with the other. Meanwhile the jet ski idiot was so delirious from the accident that he still kept trying to swim back to the jet ski. My father then proceeded to tie the delirious idiot's arms to his sides and drag him back to our boat. My dad is pretty effing tough. I was about 10 and was swimming in the ocean with my three little siblings and my mom, who was holding my little brother because he was still a baby. All of a sudden she screams out, in terrible pain, then yells, feet up, swim to shore, now. She grabs my little sister, she is limping, holding my brother and sister when she screams again and falls backwards, all the while holding my baby brother six inches above water. My sister over her shoulder to avoid the effing school of stingray that were passing by and we had trampled all over. We made it to shore, she had three stings total on her right leg, one in her foot, and had to be hospitalized for two days. None of us got stung at all. Momin, like a boss. TL, DR, my mom took four stingray stings while holding her kids above water. I was about 10 when, my dad was driving, a friend of his was in the passenger seat, Tom, and I in the back, late at night, and we drive up to damaged van and a flaming car standing in the middle of the motorway, obviously a crash. Flaming. I mean, this car had flames everywhere, it was fully ablaze. The van driver was sitting on the median, in shock, apathetic. We stopped of course, and a guy runs up asking whether anyone has a phone, these were the old days, phones were rare. My dad has one, and calls emergency services, describes the scene, gives all the info, etc. This takes a few minutes, and just as dad hangs up, the passenger door opens, and Tom, with blackened face, sits down. We hadn't even noticed he was gone. Apparently when the car stopped, he immediately got out, ran over to the burning car, pulled out three unconscious teenagers, and laid them on the shoulder. Like a boss. Others then set about doing first aid. We all drove off again when the ambulance arrived. Dad obviously did the right thing, calling emergency and staying with his kid, so no disrespect. But Tom was the hero. The teenagers, I guess, never knew who saved their lives. When I was about 8 or 9, I was in a car accident with my grandmother. We were making a U-turn, about half a block from our home, and two cars came racing directly into us. Our car flipped a couple times then stopped at a tree. I was sleeping at the time so didn't see slash feel anything. I just remember images of a man pulling me out of the car and setting me down on the sidewalk. Then I blacked out. 
After asking my mom about him and who he was, she didn't recall seeing anyone else at the scene of the crash. He helped me and my grandmother out of the car and left. Thanks, Tom, whoever you are. Unfortunately, my grandmother later died at the hospital. When I was a little kid, I lived on a farm that was bordered by a river. My cousins were visiting, and one of them was sitting on the riverbank. She must have only been five or six at the time. It had rained recently, so the river was high and swift. She fell into the river and couldn't swim back to shore. Her mom jumped in to save her. She was strong enough to swim back to shore but couldn't get back while holding her daughter. While my family was freaking out our nice and obedient golden retriever, Charmer, jumped in and safely pulled them both back to shore like a mother effing boss. He was probably the best dog we had. When I was seven and my brother was five, we had moved into a townhouse sort of neighborhood. We used to call them chicken coops to give you a description of what they were like. It was a pretty bad neighborhood with lots of drug dealers, gang bangers, and prostitutes. Lots of kids running around unchecked because their low-life parents couldn't possibly give a fuck. Where we had come from, my brother and I had lived a fairly sheltered life, and we had come from a very nice neighborhood where none of the kids swore and the adults all had real jobs. Well, first week in the townhouse, my brother and I were playing in the backyard. It was a rule of our moms that we never leave the backyard, and it never occurred to us to disobey. So when some older kids come by to see the new family moving in, they ask us to go with them. We refused because we were perfectly content where we were, and our mother's word was law as far as we were concerned. Also, because of our previous sheltered life, we were very naive and never had encountered bullies before of any caliber. These kids kept pressuring and pushing us until finally the oldest one, maybe 11 years old, asked if he can come in the yard. Being naive, I opened the gate for him, and we see him holding this thick sharpened stick. The end was this wickedly sharp point, and you could see that he had used a knife to cut it down, so there was no telling what else he was concealing. He brandishes the stick in our direction, and suddenly out of nowhere my 260 pounds dad comes charging out the back door, across the yard and straight at the group of kids. We all screamed and scattered, but my dad was holding out for the 11 year old with the stick. Later we found out his name was Sorry, Randy. Wait. He chases Randy across the parking lot and out of sight. Dad, what was going on? And my dad explained that Randy was terrorizing his young kids. When Randy 